In a previous video for Vintage Tractor Engineer, we looked in detail at the indirect injection version of the three-cylinder Perkins engine as fitted to a Massey Ferguson 35. We've now got here a, a direct injection version out of a 135, so we thought we'd take a look at some of the differences. If we take a look at the insides of the engine first, we can see that the most obvious difference is the piston design. On the indirect injection engines, the piston crowns are flat and there's no hole in them and the combustion chamber is in the cylinder head. The combustion chambers on the direct injection version are built into the top of the pistons, as here, and there's varying different designs depending on the engine application and age. The combustion chamber is arranged so that the injector fires directly into the bowl on top of the piston. The injector nozzle features four very small jets which fire out around so that the fuel goes all into all parts of the bowl. And we can see from this that this is where we get the phrase direct injection from. The fuel is directly injected into the cylinder. This leads to an improvement in efficiency and running and starting ability because we're not having to force the gases through the hull into the pre-combustion chamber on the indirect version. From the outside of the engine, if we take a look at the cylinder head, we can tell which type of engine we've got because on the direct version the injectors are at a slight angle whereas the older type ones the injectors go straight down into the indirect injection chambers. The one thing that we do need to take account of when we're rebuilding this engine is the clearance between the top of the piston and the cylinder block. We can measure the difference in height between the block and the piston with it at top dead centre, so the piston at the very upmost position using a dial test indicator. So taking a measurement along the axis of the gudgeon pin, so that if the piston can turn a little bit sideways we're not going to get any effect from that, we can move from the block surface, we can see that for this engine we should have between one and six thousandths of an inch less on the piston top to the block top and we're reading there five and a half. And don't forget that there's many different applications for these engines and these readings are different depending on the application. Our pistons have been trimmed down by the engineers to suit the, suit the engine specifications. Like most engines fitted with the DPA injection pump this engine's provided with scribe marks both on the pump and on the timing case and a good basic timing is to have them lined up exactly. But if for some reason the timing marks are not visible or we've had to have a new timing case for example that doesn't have the mark put on it we need a more accurate or different method of um, assessing the timing. So if we take a look through the timing inspection hole provided on the side of the engine we can see some marks on the flywheel. On this one we've got it lined up with the 24 degrees mark against the datum point there indicated on the, on the flywheel cover. The next part of the timing process is to look at the injector pump data plate. On there will be the type of number of the pump and on here we've got some figures which start with set and on there we've got MW46 which is relates to a table provided by Perkins. Reading off from the Perkins book we go down to MW46 and we can read across to the static timing which is 24 degrees before top dead centre. Once you've double checked that the flywheel is still on 24 degrees we look in the side of the injector pump for the E mark. There's a line and there's an E. And we need that to be lined up with the squared end of the circlip. So we need to rotate the pump about its mounting bolts until we get that right. You may find that you have a circlip with a groove which goes through into the hole there, into the clip hole. If you've got that type of circlip, you can use that groove mark there as your datum point. There's been lots of different uses and applications of these engines over the year, hence we've got to make sure we get the adjustments and settings correct. That's why we need to refer to the table that we will provide for you. 
This will allow us to build these engines back up correctly to full specification and full performance and last a good number of years in the future.